<laughs> the other night as I was falling asleep, I noticed that I was unconsciously mewing. This is not a bit. I woke up after being in a half asleep, half awake daze and felt my tongue press against the roof of my mouth without touching my teeth, of course. The unconscious mind is truly something else. After months of hearing the term mewing and even attempting it myself, my brain started doing it on its own. What else is it doing without my knowledge? Hey, that's my private brain business. This Neuralink chip is really getting out of hand. I'm gonna have to contact Elon about this. For months, Lux Maxine has been plaguing TikTok with even my comments on the app being infected by this brain rot virus, which I guess can be considered a compliment. Bro is mogging, okay, work. I guess I am. <laughs> Although this seems new, Lux Maxine actually has some pretty insidious roots. The surface of Lux Maxine isn't nearly as bad as what's at the bottom of the iceberg. Today, I'm going to be covering the Lux Maxine community, the dangers of it, and perhaps even trying to Lux Max myself at the end of this video. Who knows? Yes, I'm aware that Curtis Connor did that, but he's not the only one who's allowed to make content about Lux Maxine, okay? Sorry, it got a little intense there. Without further ado, let's get into it. I know that a decent amount of my audience does not have TikTok. You guys are smart. So just for you, I'll give you all a definitions that will help you navigate through this swamp of brain rot. Looks Maxine with two X's, because that's cooler, is in sum, a collection of ideas and hacks that are used to maximize one's looks. Looks Maxine makes itself seem like simple self-improvement, when in reality, it's incredibly more insidious. With such an extreme emphasis and obsession on looks, of course, Looks Maxine is going to make more young men feel insecure in themselves, rather than actually improving their lifestyles, like learning to like yourself for who you are would. As with every community, there are some extremities in the looks maxing culture. Looks maxing starts with soft maxing, which includes skincare, a healthy diet, exercising, mewing, and a bunch of other things that are literally basic hygiene, but to men are a new concept, such as having a skincare routine. How to looks max, step number one, wash your ass. However, there's another element to this community called Hard maxing, which includes steroid use, plastic surgery, bone smashing, starve maxing, white maxing, and edge maxing, also known as gooning, where you withhold yourself from climaxing in order to boost testosterone, which therefore improves a man's appearance. The more extreme half of this community is what led to TikTok even putting up a warning screen if you attempt to search looks maxing without censoring it on the tab. Although hard maxing is obviously more extreme, Soft maxing is also incredibly dangerous in a lot of ways. The looks maxing community is extremely depressing. As I was going through it in order to make this video, I found myself actually disturbed at multiple points and saddened by some of the shit that I was seeing on the app. On the other hand, a lot of looks maxing culture has been widely adopted by people for ironic meme type usage. Yo, what? I'm mewing. Yo, what? I'm mewing. What are you yapping about? Looks maxing. You know, looks maxing. I myself have joked about mewing and mogging in my TikToks because it's fucking funny and stupid. <laughs> this I don't have a problem with. It's the men who are dead serious about looks maxing that scare me. We'll get into my constant despair later. I like to practice a style called avoidance. For now, let's go through all the different subcategories of this community that I mentioned. Mewing is by far the biggest part of looks maxing culture. Mewing is a technique in which the tongue is placed on the roof of the mouth and is purported to make the jaw more square, improve sleep, and reduce mouth breeding. It was named after Mike and John Mew, the controversial British orthodontist who created the technique as a part of practice called orthotropics. I will get into the history of looks maxing and mewing in a bit, but Nikki Carrion did a great video with a very in-depth look on the foundations of this community, so check out her video if you want more info on that. Men in the looks maxing community claim that mewing can improve your jaw shape, reducing the fat surrounding it, making it more angular, and even fixing poor posture in the neck, such as the dreaded gamer neck, something that I personally suffer from. In fact, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> However, there are no credible studies supporting these claims, and most of the positive claims are by unaccredited individuals like influencers or by the creators of mewing themselves. Newsflash, you can't change the bone structure of your jaw unless you get surgery. Putting your tongue to the roof of your mouth for six weeks straight 
isn't going to turn you into Mr. Gigachad. Sorry. Now, this does come with some caveats. Of course, if you're young and you're still going through puberty, I don't doubt that mewing could help shape your jaw, though the evidence on that is scant. The other thing is that the vast majority of people who praise mewing are also losing weight as they're mewing. When you're on a caloric deficit and you end up losing weight, the most notable changes will be in your face. And if you're in the single digit of body fat, obviously your jawline is going to be extremely defined. Someone's genetics will also play a role in how well defined their jaw is. A lot of the looks maxing influencers cite male model Jordan Barrett, or Barrett, I don't know if he's French or whatever, as evidence of their claims. But there's no evidence that mewing is the reason for why he has a pronounced jawline. He most likely is just incredibly blessed with his genetics, and on top of that, is much thinner than the average male, which would lead you to having a more defined jawline. Trying to sell this idea to young men that just by tonguing yourself all day long will make you look like the world's top 1% of attractive men is deeply deceitful. As for the health benefits of mewing, such as helping with sleep apnea, mouth breathing, and more, please see a doctor if you can for these issues. Don't take advice from Patrick Bateman Light on TikTok. Like I said, these influencers go so far as to sell, sell. their ridiculous standards for men. One popular product in the community is tape. No, not that kind of tape. Tape which they claim will prevent mouth breathing at night and allow you to mew all through the night. However, blocking off a primary airway while you're unconscious is probably not a good idea. These tapes run horizontally across the mouth, which is what I personally do to my hostage victims in my basement. But if you're trying to prevent mouth breathing, doctors recommend only taping your mouth vertically. <laughs> Since fully covering your mouth could lead to serious complications in the middle of the night with people who have sleep apnea or other breathing problems that they might not know about, such as asphyxiation in the middle of the night. How will you be able to enjoy your sculpted jawline if you're dead? Breathing out of your nose, medically speaking, is better for you, but there are options you could take advantage of with a qualified medical professional if you're worried about your mouth breathing instead of DIY taping your mouth shut every night. Some looks maxers promote a cement-like gum, which allegedly grows the muscles in your jaw from chewing on it. Can this promote stronger jaw muscles? Sure, but it's unlikely to make a noticeable change. Studies have shown that in child development, chewing on harder foods can drastically affect the size and shape of a child's jaw as they grow. But this is not applied to grown men in their 20s and 30s, and sometimes sadly even in their 40s. Another term that is sacred to the looks maxing community is Mogging. The word mogging is derived from the acronym AMOG, which stands for alpha male of the group. To mog someone is to assert one's dominance over them with the hopes of impressing women. It's basically when you're more physically attractive than someone else in the room. Or smarter, richer, and better dressed than that person. The poor, dirty fuck. If someone says, bro mogged, bro is mogging right now, that means that your looks were so good that they overtook the looks of someone else, such as the person leaving the comment on that TikTok video. Oh wait, they're not leaving comments because you're fucking ugly and can't mog. <laughs> Gooning is another term that you'll also frequently hear in looks maxing communities. A form of self-pleasure that involves self-pleasuring for a long time without reaching uh, the epitome of self-pleasure, resulting in a hypnotic trance-like state. Okay, someone needs to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> looks maxers claim that this act will raise the natural production of testosterone in a man's body. The hard <laughs> truth is that pleasure does not increase the production in the long term meaning you won't produce more forever simply because you jerk off a lot in fact a few studies have shown the exact opposite these studies have shown that short periods of abstinence can boost testosterone though only slightly research is still scant though so there isn't a definitive answer contrary to what looks maxers and no fat men say again if you are a man truly suffering from low testosterone levels or is worried that you might be, the only way you can make a large difference in your testosterone levels is testosterone replacement therapy. Working out or jerking out can possibly make minimal differences, but it won't solve the problem long term if your testosterone is truly too low. The final part of the looks maxing community, specifically in the soft maxing portion of it, is the 
Canthal tilt and the shape and position of your eyes. Okay, we've all seen this filter. Let me explain it a little bit more. This is the canthal tilt filter. So what is the canthi? A canthus is the corner of your eye. So this is the medial canthus, this is the lateral canthus, and the canthal tilt is essentially the angle between a line drawn between those two points and a completely horizontal line. To be clear, looks maxers are obsessed with every aspect of a person's face and physique, from your nose shape to your eyebrows to your hair and sense of fashion. But the jaw and eyes are two of the most popular forms of looks maxing in the community. One thing that Chris also touched on in the TikTok that I just showed you was how perspective can drastically alter how your eyes appear, as with every aspect of your appearance. For example, most people look better when they're looking up at a camera because it makes their face appear less fat, and a fat face is unwanted in Western standards of beauty. The other thing is cameras warp how you look tremendously, but I'm not even gonna get into that right now. If I look straight at you right now, my canthal tilt is pretty neutral. I think most people fall into the neutral category when they look at you straight on. However, when I tilt my head down, my tilt is positive. Same as when I look up at you, it comes off as slightly negative. I also actually have very hooded lids, so my eyes often appear on the positive canthal tilt line. Why does this all matter though? Well, a positive canthal tilt is attractive, since this gives you the appearance of hunter eyes. <laughs> Whereas a negative tilt will give you play eyes, which are unattractive since you'll be seen as flighty and, well, like prey. We're still in the hunting and gathering era, I guess. <laughs> like everything else in the looks backs and community, this truly does not fucking matter. Jacob Eldori has a negative tilt, and look at how many women are obsessed with that man. He is also super tall, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. It's not over for him because he has a negative canthal tilt. Just because he doesn't pass your arbitrary test of attractiveness doesn't mean he's ugly. <laughs> In fact, he's most likely getting more game than you, insecure man who thinks the tilt of his eyes will determine whether he gets to go on a second date with her. <laughs> you won't. This obsession, of course, leads to men promoting ways to change your candle tilt, which I must reiterate, you cannot do. <laughs> your eyes are where they are because of the structure of your fucking skull. One guy on TikTok even made an instructional video on how to fix your eyes by pulling the skin in an upwards motion repeatedly, which does nothing except expedite the aging process by giving you crow's feet by the time you're 30. You'd think a looks maxer would have this basic knowledge. But they don't, because guess what? They don't know what they're talking about. The shape of your skull won't stop some looks maxers who even have apparently gone so far as to smash their face with a hammer to prompt their <laughs> bones to grow back in a more manly way. Though I hope and I believe no one has actually done this, hmm, guys. <laughs> Bone smashing is only one part of the hard maxing portion of the community. Other aforementioned things, which I will not be going too in depth into, are extreme starvation diets and even furthering into colorism with some people promoting lightening your skin by white maxing. Most of these things aren't usually left up on TikTok since they clearly violate a lot of guidelines on there, but that doesn't mean that soft maxing isn't affecting young men just as much. There are a few big looks maxing influencers, which include, but is not limited to, Walmart Patrick Bateman, Kay Shami, Sam Zia, and Adix Sovic. All of these men make videos instructing young men on how to improve their looks by focusing on every minute detail on themselves. Have acne? It's over for you. No abs? It's over. Bad eyebrows? Ugh, it's all over! If you scroll through these guys' comments, you'll see hundreds of people pointing out their faults and claiming how it's quote-unquote over for them. Telling men to wash their face, eat better, and work out in order to take care of themselves is all fine and good. But these videos go to the extremes and are only an insecurity factory for young men who end up finding these videos. These influencers are all very attractive men, even without looks maxing, and it's fucking sad to me that they're so obsessed with every little thing on themselves. But there's huge money to be made off of people's insecurities. All of them sell looks maxing products with affiliate links and codes, even selling looks maxing courses. A few of them also promote an app called UMAX where you submit a picture of yourself and the app gives you a rating based on var various arbitrary scales. It'll give you a routine in order to fix yourself because losing weight and getting rid of acne is just that simple. And we'll even create AI generated photos of you as a 10 out of 10, supposedly. If that isn't creating body dysmorphia on people, I don't know what is. These influencers are quite literally 
profiting off of the insecurities that they are helping create. It all boils down to the fact that looks maxers absolutely hate average looking people. Most men do not have a sculpted jawline, perfect skin, perfect abs, perfect everything. And it's fucking ridiculous to expect someone or even just yourself to check off all these boxes. I'm not gonna sit here and deny that pretty privilege does exist in society for both men and women. Research consistently shows that attractive individuals are more likely to be hired, promoted, and receive higher salaries, and just be better treated by people overall. There could quite literally be societal advantages to changing your appearance to become more conventionally attractive. However, it should not be the only thing that matters to you. I know it sounds cheesy, but personality really does matter more than looks, especially when it comes to dating. If you're already taking care of your hygiene, working out, and eating well, you're already doing better than the average person, and improvements in your looks will follow. If you are seriously devoting time to only sleeping on your back because side sleeping will make your face unequal, please reevaluate your life. What these men might not realize is that they may be unintentionally or even intentionally, allegedly, prompting up dangerous ideologies that were once and still are popular within the incel community. I don't want to delve too far into this part of the video simply because it's way more complicated than it seems it would be. Incels, and when I say incels, I'm speaking about the extreme misogynistic community of men, not men who simply want to have sex but can't find a partner and are normal human beings. Incels are proven time and time again to be violently misogynistic. Lonely men project their problems onto women and many times, unfortunately, have cheered on violence against women or have even gone so far as to actually have committed it themselves. It's way more complicated than that. But in layman's terms, that's what the incel community promotes. Not all incels murder women, but their intense misogyny definitely contributes to the violence. Why, oh why, would these influencers want to promote looks maxing culture then? Do they not know it comes from incels or do they just not care? Looks maxing can easily lead men down a rabbit hole and into incel culture. On anonymous incel forums, young men are trained to calculate their sexual market value. If they are deemed below average, they're bullied, accused of being bitches who are feminine, weak, and submissive, too ugly to live, and told to take their own lives. Predominantly used in incel and male subcultures, Looks Magazine dates back to 2015 and started on the incel forum website looksism.net and looksmaxer.com. Use of the term then became commonplace on 4chan and Reddit, <laughs> two of my favorite places, continuing into the late 2010s and early 2020s on subreddits like r true rate me among others and if you know anything about r true rate me these men's obsessions with looks tie into other male favorites in incel culture such as famous sigma male patrick bateman joaquin phoenix joker and tyler durden from fight club and a bunch of other great movie characters that have been ruined by the incel film bros one of the biggest looks maxers on tiktok frequently compares himself to patrick bateman and while I understand relating to the non-murderous and misogynistic aspects of him, it's also strange to market looks maxing to young men while also using a satirical character who, again, murders women for you and other people to compare themselves to. Men believing that they're ugly and in turn lower down in the social hierarchy, which is, of course, run by women at the top, only promotes violence against women. While many looks maxers are not directly promoting incel culture, they're still indirectly leading some men down this pipeline. And even if they don't become raging misogynist, a lot of these men will still end up hating every part of themselves from this amount of body toxicity. It's not clear how far mainstream looks maxing has moved away from its roots in the online incel communities. In these spaces, men blame women and feminism for their romantic failings. They retreat into a world in which they pursue their own masculine ideals, ideally acquiring ripped bodies, and in the case of the looks maxers, strong jaws and hunter eyes. The less than stellar history of looks maxing does not end there. Mewing actually comes from a controversial orthodontist by the name of John Mew and his son, Mike Mew. Orthodontists rejected their theories about tongue exercises and palate devices for children that these two creators even claimed could replace braces. John Mew, in fact, had his dental license revoked in 2017 by the General Dental Council for misconduct and publicly maligning the practice of orthodontist. If that doesn't tell you what you need to know about the guy, then I don't know what does. Well, you know, how about this? He is in the middle of a misconduct hearing at the General D Dental Council into his treatment of an unnamed child. The council argues that there was no adequate objective evidence for his treatment, which included the use of a platelet expander and head and neck gear. I wish I could tell you that 
Lux Maxine is just, only just causing more insecurities in men. Something that's in already incredibly high nowadays, but it's not. The very foundations of the Lux Maxine movement are shoddy at best and extremely insidious at worst. With all that out of the way, I figured we could try something new. For about a week, I'm planning on implementing some Lux Maxine techniques to fix my face and physique and turn me into the Giga Chat that I was always meant to be. Without further ado, let's Lux Max. Hey guys, I know this looks terrible, but I am using my good mic, so. Anyway, I'm using my photo booth right now because I need to use my phone. I downloaded the app UMax. I really, I'm going to submit a photo of myself because I'm, I'm deathly curious how it's going to rate me. Cameras distort your face like crazy. How many times have you looked, your, looked at yourself in a mirror and you're like, holy fucking shit, that's what I look like? And you're like, I look so good right now. You take out your phone, you take a picture of yourself and I'm like, what? happened to me i digress choose a gender male Fuck you i'm not rating you i haven't even used your app and you're asking me to rate you i have to sign in i'll sign in with apple okay take daily progress pic oh, i'm not a big fan of progress pics the only time you should be taking a progress pic and this goes for everyone is if you like day one you're like losing weight or something you take a picture wait like at least six months take a picture and you'll be like holy shit if you take a progress picture like every day, you're gonna be like, I look the same as I did yesterday. <laughs> That's just gonna discourage you. I look better in the computer camera. Just waiting. Mm -mm. Might pack a dip while I'm waiting here because I'm fucking bored, okay? Progress pic saved. Okay, let me begin scan. I want to choose an existing image. So I'm gonna choose my biggest, the best mogging picture I've ever taken. I'm gonna choose this one. Upload a side selfie. What kind of bullshit is this? Hey, why is it like in 60 FPS? Look at it. I'm gonna get my better, this is my better side. Dude, why do I look hotter on the camera? Look at my hand. Ooh. Don't you guys want me to grip you with that one? Oh. I'm losing my mind. Okay. The lighting is horrible. I gotta turn to the sides of the window. Yes, I was mewing while I took that photo, by the way. Continue. I have to invite three friends or get UMAX Pro? Th people are paying money for this? $3.99 per week? <laughs> they don't even give me a free trial? This may take two minutes. Oh my god, why don't I just jerk off while I'm sitting here too? Face scan in seven days, supercharge now. Generating your scan 1%. Yes, I'd like to see what I look like as a 10 out of 10. That's why I'm doing this. Okay, I took the pictures from my 10 out of 10 rating. How long is this going to take? Dude, what are they doing? Like stealing biometric data or something? How, why is this taking so long? March, oh, finally, I get the results. Jesus Christ. I just closed the app and opened it up. Overall, 75. Hey, that's not bad. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be like, you're fucking hideous. Go kill yourself now. <laughs> not that bad. Potential. 86% masculinity 69. <laughs> That's to be expected, okay? Skin quality 85. Hey, not that bad. Seen as I break out every day. Uh, jawline 70. In that picture, you're gonna give me a 70? Right now, sure. In that picture? <laughs> you're fucking lying to me. This is what I spent $4 on? Huh? Cheekbone 66. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me just take these and pull them out so they're a bit more pronounced. Let me just I'll be like this all the time. Fucking sex doll. Face shape heart. Well, I knew that. Canthal tilt neutral. I said that. Um, eye shape almond. Eye type hunter. I told you guys I got hunter eyes. What did I say? What did I say? All those people in my comments are always saying, Bro's got prey eyes. It's over him. No one's ever said that to me in my life. I was like, overall, 75. You're here. Masculinity is better than 49% of people, you know? Groom your eyebrows, first priority. Second priority, jaw strengthening. Start a skincare routine. Oh, okay. Like, I've been doing skincare before half the men on this planet were even born. Prevent acne. Do this worse. Oh, oh, yeah. Like, I haven't been trying that. Groom your eyebrows. Simple method. Pluck. Shave, shave my un- Oh yeah, the, the very prominent unibrow I have. 
And then I love it sells products for me. Thank yeah. Do you guys get an affiliate for that too? Property off my insecurities for my thin eyebrows. Oh, I bet you do. <laughs> Prevent acne. Um, eat a natural, healthy diet. Yeah, I already do that. Benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid. Severe cases consulted with dermatologist. Well, at least I said that. Oh, we got my glow up routine here. I can see it every day. I can just think about uh, how ugly this app said I was. The things I need to do. <laughs> Give you my horrible photo. Why is this taking so long? I'm gonna look it up. I'm not sitting here for 10 minutes waiting for this to process. I'll try it again one more time before I edit and upload this video next week. But I'm ending it here. I'm done. Uh, fix your selfie pro processing. Uh, yeah, don't try this app because you're just gonna feel bad about yourself. Um, did I need to tell you that for you to know that? All right. When attempting to look max, there are a ton of rules that one needs to follow. From not sleeping on your side to teeth whitening to jaw training and God knows what else. Well. We do know what else. It's called gooning, which I won't be attempting in today's video because that's for a separate video platform. For the sake of my time, I'm going to be trying only a few things with my first priority being what the UMAX app told me are my top priorities, lest I come out of this still looking like an ugly beta male. My first priority was eyebrow grooming. Now, I haven't tweezed my eyebrows in a long time since I'm trying to grow them out because they're extremely thin, but UMAX told me that I basically look like a caveman so i'm guessing i'm going to have to tweeze some of them there were some hairs on the outside of my brows that i felt comfortable tweezing so i did that the next step in my brow routine will hopefully thicken my eyebrows to make me look more like a giga chad i've actually been doing this step in my routine for about a month now completely unrelated to this video and that is applying castor oil on my eyebrows every night Allegedly, castor oil can promote hair growth in the eyebrows and even in your eyelashes. Since I have very thin brows, I've been doing this to hope that they actually grow back thicker. I did get my eyebrows tinted last month when I got my hair done to make them look thicker and have them be more prominent, but I'm planning on getting them tinted again when I get my hair cut this week. <laughs> Spoiler for the video! My second priority was a skincare routine as well as managing acne, which I already do and have been doing for 10 years. But to some men, basic hygiene is seen as glowing up, so I will be including this in my looks maxing routine. I guess if you go from never washing your face to suddenly washing it, it can probably make a big difference. For some reason, CeraVe is considered the holy grail to these men. I personally don't like CeraVe because it dries my skin out like fucking crazy because I have skin drier than the Sahara, so I'll be opting out of using that. I'm assuming it's popular because it's cheap and easily accessible. fellas. You can broaden your horizons, you're allowed to do that. You don't only have to use CeraVe forever. My skincare routine consists of... <clears throat> Sorry, let me do my Patrick Bateman voice for this. My skincare routine consists of a double cleanse at night with the Crave Beauty Oil Cleanser and Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser. Please sponsor me. To top off my looks maxing, I will be shaving because high value men shave every single day, which I don't do. I'll try to shave every day for the rest of the week. I, I'll try, okay. After that, I go in with their chemical exfoliant every three days or so. I've been using their Great Barrier Relief for a while now to manage acne, but recently got prescribed colmenomycin for my acne, so I've been using that instead recently. Then I moisturize, pop on my castor oil, and I'm done. Everything is more or so same in the morning, except I don't double cleanse or exfoliate. And I put on my first sunscreen in the morning because if you're a looks maxer, you should be anti sun exposure. Another thing looks maxers are obsessed with is white teeth and perfectly straight teeth. I personally hate the look of perfect teeth because I think they make you look like a robot. And I think it's nice having unique features like pointy or slightly crooked teeth. I'm speaking from experience, okay? If everyone looks like a carbon copy of everyone else, then what the fuck are you even offering society? My teeth are already pretty white due to a whitening kick that I had when I was 16. Fellas, just use mouthwash, floss, and brush, and you'll be fine. Now my final priority was jaw strengthening. One thing looks maxers praise is a traditional Chinese medicinal tool called a gua sha because leave it to white people to take something from another culture and reclaim it as their own. They also promote jade rolling a lot which is similar to a gua sha but not exactly quite the same. I actually already own a gua sha 
because I carry all of my tension in my jaws and often will wake up with such extreme jaw pain in the morning that it feels like I've been sucking on cock for 48 hours straight, though unfortunately I have not. Because of Luxmaxer's obsession with a gua sha, I will be implementing it into my routine for the next couple of days every night. While a gua sha won't make you wake up looking like Mr. Gigachad, it will help drain lymphatic points, relieve tension, which is what I use it for, possibly help with fine lines, and promote a better appearance in the skin while reducing puffiness. I also will be attempting jaw strengthening exercises, though one could argue that I don't need it since I'm training my jaw every night because I clench it through the entire night because of my extreme anxiety and paranoia, but I digress. <laughs> Of course, I will be mewing as often as possible, though I already do that most of the time since my tongue is never relaxed. Today I'm going to be trying jaw strengthening exercises. I know I could have purchased a, um, like a jaw trainer thing that looks oddly similar to a gag ball you use in BDSM, but I'm not even going to point that out right now. I could have purchased one of those. I could have purchased the gum that, uh, the Sigma male look maxers use, whatever the fuck, but... I don't want to spend my money. So we're going to do some jaw strengthening exercises that anyone can do. Poor, rich, fat, ugly, skinny, whatever. I'll link this down below if for some reason you want to do these. I don't I don't know what you do in your free time. So the name of these exercises are exercise one, the the clencher. That's my butt cheeks do on a daily basis. The chew, the wide yawn, chin up, tongue twister. Okay, um, the pucker up, jaw flex. It's exactly what it sounds like. It involves clenching your teeth, engaging the jaw muscles in the process. Sounds easy, right? That's because it is. Simply clench your teeth as tightly as possible without causing discomfort. How many sets and repetitions? <laughs> you guys gonna give me a full workout schedule too? This exercise can be done virtually anywhere. No, really, could it? I don't, actually, I don't think it could be done in space. Wow, I can already feel my my muscles growing in my jaw. This exercise stimulates the motion of chewing but without the actual presence of food or gum. Okay, why do it then? If you'd rather not be chewing on nothing, you don't have to wait until- Ah, uh, we can absolutely try- try the Jawliner 3.0! And numbers- coming in at number three is the grinder! Grind your teeth back and forth together until they fucking disintegrate! For the third exercise, we're going to mimic a yawn. Yes, you read that right, did I? Start by opening your mouth as wide as you can when, as you would when yawning. Stretch it to the point where you can feel your jaw muscles engage, but not to the point of discomfort. Hold this yawn five to 10 seconds and gradually close your mouth. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Every night. I just gotta cramp, I just gotta cramp. The chin up is as straightforward as it gets. Start by lifting your chin towards the ceiling while keeping your lips together. Try to mimic a chewing motion. If you feel your jaw and neck muscles be engaged, it's about 20 seconds, then relax your chin down. Do a few sets of these each day. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. You know, I only felt that in the back of my neck. Exercise five, tongue twister. Start by positioning the tip of your tongue against the roof. The f you trying to repackage mewing as if it's something new. Mother f I read between the lines. I'm not stupid. I forgot to press record on this microphone. First, lift your chin towards the ceiling, then pucker your lips as if you're about to give someone a big smooch. Yes, God. I only kiss God. Hold this position for about 10 seconds and relax. Do a few sets of this each day. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Every night. Last but not least, we have the jaw flex. Start by turning your head to one side so your chin is pointing towards your shoulder, then slowly open and close your mouth. You should feel a stretch in the jaw and neck. Do this for about 10 repetitions and repeat on the other side. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Every night. And I can feel my leg. I mean, I, I could realistically try to do these every day. Um, but I think my jaw tension would just get worse. Oh my god, I'm done. Goodbye. Working out is an obvious thing to do and it's something I already do. I've been doing for years. In fact, I started the cut recently. And while I won't lose all my fat in a few days for this video, my diet changes and workout schedule can be considered part of my looks maxing routine. Because as I stated previously, being on a caloric deficit will definitely emphasize your jawline a lot. The final thing I'm going to be doing for my looks maxing routine is getting a haircut and tinting my eyebrows to put the final finishing touches on my hashtag glow up. Looks maxers are obsessed with getting haircuts that fit your face shape. All right, guys, I'm leaving right now to 
looks max to the maximum. I gotta go get a haircut and get my eyebrows dyed, so I'll, I'm gonna go drive there and I'll show you guys the results afterwards. So I got my hair cut and if we're gonna be raw and honest, raw, we're gonna be raw in this video. Um, I, I just gotta, <clears throat> I went in and I asked for this and I was like, yeah, I wanna get it cut shorter on the sides. I want the top to be shorter. I want it to look, you know, shorter on the side because it was too puffy on the sides. I just had like a really bad breakdown. I don't like the haircut and it's not my hairdresser's fault at all because I asked her for this. It's just I wasn't expecting the short hair to look so bad on me. I don't like myself with short hair. And now it's really, really short on the sides. And well, it's I feel very, very insecure about it. Um, so it kind of sucks that I have to continue this video when I don't feel good about myself. <laughs> it's kind of ironic, to be honest. Um, I got a haircut to improve my ratings in the looks maxing app, which is a joke. Yeah. But like, I don't feel good about myself. So it's like, I don't want to have to fucking have an app give me ratings. I'm not going to say I didn't want it this short because I asked her to go this short. I just didn't know this is what it would look like after it was this short. And I feel like really bad about myself. I feel like I look like a fucking, I don't know, like a potato. Like I'm really upset about it. Like genuinely very, very upset. Cause like, why did I go to get it cut? Because it looked fine. Who cares if it looked a little poofy in the back? Because now it's too short and I don't even want to look at myself. So it's like, I have naturally thick hair and I had her thin it out a lot. And now I feel bad about myself because it's like I got rid of all of my thickness. And it's super short on the sides now. And I know it's going to take months to grow back now. And it's going to take weeks until it gets back to the point where it was. And I just feel really, really shitty. Now, after I do all of this, we're going to check back in with the UMAX app to see if my ratings have improved at all. Did I turn into a GigaChad by doing these few simple tricks? Probably not, because this takes time. But let's check back in just to see anyway. Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> I'm still pretty upset about my haircut. Again, I asked for it to be cut this short. It's just I didn't know that I would look so, in my opinion, stupid with it cut this short. But she blended it out really well. So it's gonna when it grows out, it's gonna look really good. But the problem is it has to grow out first. Anyway, today we're gonna check back in with the app. But I just went out in good lighting, took a few pictures to submit for the U as a 10 out of 10 so that at least I look the best I can look. Oh, by the way, before I do my um, ranking thing again, I tried multiple times to do the U as a 10 out of 10. Every time it just, I submitted the last photo and it would process and process and process. Oh my God. When I was good looking. <laughs> it's, I just have the same face. Why do I look so much worse? Wait a minute. Every time you do a face scan, you have to pay $4. You can hear the whistle of the wind outside and the peaceful sounds of the birds relaxing. And the breeze is blowing on my little toes right now, but I am far from calm. Let's choose, uh, I don't know what picture I want to use. Because I look terrible in all of them. <laughs> See, the, yeah, well, the hair looks good on the side. It's just the front is, um, this may take two minutes. And I'll just sit back, relax, and think about my life's choices while I wait. There's a lot to think about. It might take longer than two minutes. I understand that clinical studies cost a lot, and also that a lot of people, pharmaceutical, whatever the fuck you want to blame it on, they don't, wouldn't want to do clinical studies that prove that you don't need surgery to change the shape of your jaw, or that you don't need something put in your mouth to fix it or whatever. I understand that criticism 100%. The thing with mewing is it, the evidence is still anecdotal, and while I recognize that as evidence, it's just not enough for me to feel okay with people promoting it as this thing that m men need to do to fix their jawline or whatever. Like I started putting castor oil on my eyebrows last month. I'm not going to come on here and tell you guys if you have thin, I I'm not, well, first of all, I'm not going to insinuate that if you have thin eyebrows that you're an ugly person, right? First of all, second of all, I'm not going to come out here and say, you know, oh, well, if your eyebrows are thin, try castor oil. Cause that is what's going to make your eyebrows look thick. And I can prove this. I can't prove that because there is no clinical evidence that shows in the long term, 
I don't think mewing is going to be harmful. If you're using it to fix medical conditions, that's a different story. Like if you seriously have a problem with mouth breathing, like I said in the video, you need to see a, a, a doctor if you can. If you just are doing it because you think it's going to be a fix for the fact that your jawline isn't very pronounced and you're betting all of your money on that when it, there's a very high likelihood that these men are doing other things along with mewing that are is changing the shape of their jawline. They're doing something else. It, it's not... There is, again, there is no isolated study that proves that mewing is like putting your tongue to the roof of your mouth as an adult, once you have fully developed, is going to drastically alter the shape and size of your jaw. And I think it's dishonest to say that it can. If any of you have tried mewing for a long period of time, if you have done other sort of looks maxing hacks that take more of a, a longer time to see results for, um, let me know how it went. I still overall think this community is extremely fucking toxic and all of my criticisms that I said in the video still stand. It's just, I am a very open-minded person. I see people who have said that mewing has changed the shape of their face. I see the results and I'm like, okay, that's quite possible. It's plausible, right? When I said that I have been mewing my whole life, I honestly think I have been because I've always had my tongue on the top of my jaw. I can't think of, like when I'm sitting here relaxed, my jaw isn't just at the bottom of my mouth like this. I always have breathed out of my nose. I always, almost always have my tongue on the roof of my mouth without even realizing it. So I don't know if I have a nice jawline because of my nose breathing and because of this and that. But again, to go online and tell 30-year-old men um, a less than stellar jawline and you tell them that mewing will solve all their problems, it's just wrong to do in my opinion. <laughs> oh my god, it went down. <laughs> I just honestly think it's the perspective of, of that camera because right now my jawline looks pretty fucking wide right now but when you got a close-up lens like this it's gonna distort your face and it's gonna make your face look thinner than wider um cheekbones 59 <laughs> again like what do they want me to do get implants like <laughs> first priority prevent acne yes i'm not even gonna go on my whole tirade again grow thicker eyebrows because that's something that i can just do overnight jaw strengthening do this third again like I feel like my jaw looks nice right now. I feel like I got a nice looking jaw. I think that's a nice jawline. There are obviously things you can do that improve your life. I, I, I love self-improvement. I love working out. I love growing muscle. I love eating and doing diet changes and eating well for myself and everything like that. I love taking care of my skin, etc. I love stuff like that. But where it starts to border on an obsession instead of something you are doing for the enjoyment of improving yourself as a person, that's where the looks maxing community ha it, it has me and that's where i think it's um problematic if you will i'm problematic this obsession with a perfect appearance is not only hurting the people who are doing it to themselves but also to others around us studies highlight young men and boys are beginning to recognize misogynistic ideology and restrictive performances of masculinity these studies also argue these forums can offer alternate perspectives with information that emphasizes the importance of healthy socializing consent in respectful relationships. Changing your appearance is something we can pretty much kind of control in a world that is, well, straight up miserable. Everyone is not a model, and one could even argue that models have a detrimental effect on people's body images because they promote a standard of beauty that most average people will never meet. Being attractive takes time and money, which is something most people who are working class don't have. You will never be happy with yourself if you keep reaching for unattainable standards and comparing yourself to someone who you aren't. You're not going to look like Jordan Barrett because you don't have his face, bone structure, or body. Well, you, you could skin him alive, but that's besides the point. There is nothing wrong with being unhappy with your appearance and wishing to better yourself, but looks maxing isn't going to help. You will never like yourself if you cannot learn to accept yourself first before changing. If you're really struggling with eating, body image, and fitness, I'll link some resources down below. There are people who actually want to help you accept who you are or work on more serious problems you may be dealing with. And influencers who sell you insecurities aren't going to do that. All right, that's it for me and that's it for this video. <laughs> Let me know what you all think about looks maxing. Anything you want to comment down below about this video, please feel free to comment it down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like me, you can subscribe. I post comedy and commentary videos every Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern. So if that sounds like your thing, make sure to subscribe and turn the notification bell so you know when I post a video. I really, really hope you all enjoyed this video, but more importantly, I really, really hope that I see you in the next one. I better.
see you in the next video. Uh. Peace. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness.